What up, everybody? This your boy Black Magus, and finished uh, Return of the Jedi. So I'm almost done with my 17 days. Um, yeah, love Return of the Jedi. Um, I honestly think Return of the Jedi. I mean, I I don't know if you guys remember when I made a analogy towards uh, the original trilogy where I used um, the Uncharted series as a gauge for how they flowed, how like the first you know, New Hope is Drake's fortune, solid, um, set things off right. Empire Strikes Back is Uncharted 2, um, you know, amongst thieves, where it got super hyped. Everybody like got really into it and it drew everybody in. And then the third one is, you know, the you know, Uncharted uh Drake's uh what the hell was um, the third one called, uh, damn, I really forgot, Uncharted 3 Drake's, like, it, it was, Drake's Deception, god damn it, I can't believe I forgot that, as big as an Uncharted fan that I am, Drake's Deception, yeah, whereas it was a really, really good movie, um, could have possibly been called the best, but a lot of people underrated it I, I really felt like it was really underrated and honestly looking at Return of the Jedi now it was underrated it was very, it was it, it's underrated um I guess I still maintain that Empire is the better one but Return of the Jedi makes a strong case for the way that they closed out that series um it had great big moments um it had better character uh, relationships definitely uh, definitely the struggle with Luke over his father um, even during like Han's rescue how you got to see how Leia's feelings evolved you know how elated Chewie was to see his best friend um, Lando redeeming himself it was like it had a lot of like stuff that worked relationship wise action wise story wise it was just it was just really, really solid all the way around. Um, good action, you know. That first battle sequence um, was very, very good. Um, by the way, um, as I mentioned before, I couldn't get my hands on the original cuts, so I had to watch those um, altered versions, like where George Lucas threw in shit. And seriously, at the end of this video, I'm probably going to go off for the serious rat or George. Lucas, because he kind of ruined some things in the midst. Like, it's okay. Why do you need to all of a sudden make a full jazz band that does a full big performance in Jabba's um, palace? What, what, what did that do? What did that bring? What did that bring to the table that made it a better movie? What were you thinking? Um, you know, changing up the Sarlacc pit that triggered. The fuck out of me. Bothered me. Bothered me seriously. Like, seriously. Really, seriously bothered me. Because it's like, why do you need to add this, like, Little Shop of Horrors looking mouth thing to it? What we, what was the purpose? It was fine the way it was. And I think it kind of ruined some of the deaths. And this is like, you could catch a couple of cuts where it wouldn't be in the shot. So he kind of edited it bad on top of that. But for the most part, it was in there. And every time they showed it, it just seemed wrong, out of place. Why was this here? It was not necessary for you to put that in there. Um, it didn't enhance anything. It ruined it. It triggered the hell. I was just sitting there like, oh my god, no. You, you're messing it up. Especially since, like, if it was still canon, Boba Fett's escape would make less sense since he would not only have to crawl out of the whole pit thing but he would have had to get out of its mouth which didn't exist before so you debunked any of the like written stuff in a way with that if people really took that as um the way that the movie was intended it, it, it's, it's stupid stuff like that just more and more it's like making me very appreciative that he is no longer in creative control 
of this property. Seriously. Like, seriously. Um, but, you know, they get to Yoda telling um, Luke about his lineage and stuff like that. You know, him going over his feelings, getting up to the end, the part on Endor, where they got with the Ewoks and stuff like that. It just had a lot of great moments, you know, even on the Empire side, where the engagement between the Emperor and Vader, where the Emperor is just telling him, you're going to have to get your son, and you're going to have to change, take him, and make him bend to the dark side, and like, you know, there was a conflict in Vader, once he realized that, you know, after he realized in Empire that, yo, you're my son, you know, so... It, it, it was it was like it, it's crazy it's really really crazy also going back to that too that kind of broke some of the stuff that um lucas did in the prequels too because um how did he how did they well i guess maybe it doesn't break the prequel but it may break the originals because i is i don't know how vader figured it out or where he got the information because he's made mention that um, Obi-Wan never told you who your father really was did he so um, and then flash to Return of Jedi um, Leia spoke about how she remembered her mother some and how her mother died young makes you wonder how concrete the prequel story is or how concrete this is now See, he, it, it just, just stuff like that, stuff like that. The prequel did not need to be done, um, in hindsight, a hundred percent, hundred percent. It didn't need to be done. It, he could have left these alone and just moved the story forward, but he wanted to do the prequels. I just wish he would have went back and researched more into what he already had done and then worked on seamlessly combining those things that is the biggest problem he did not look to have any type of continuity and that's why we kind of at least that's why someone like me bashes the prequels um so it, it, but it is what it is it is now canon uh so what the fuck ever uh but you know love the like final battle um where they had the engagement the trap you know it's a trap you know Love Admiral Akbar and all that. Love how they like tried to like maintain um, the fight until Han and them got the shield down. And once they got the shield down, the final um, run and all that was great. Um, by the way, I found it funny that the only other two minorities that I saw in the whole film got off during that final. Um, uh, Death Star battle is like the only other black dude I saw and then the Asian dude who I think was um, Grey Leader or whatever they got killed maybe that's why Lucas um, decided to adopt interracial kids because he felt bad that he was killing all killing off just about every um, you know minority in Return of the Jedi except for Lando I don't know uh, it, I just thought that was funny um, but you know, it, 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 the Return of Jedi just perfectly ended things. The fight between Vader and, you know, the conclusion to the conflict, giving him that last moment of saying, um, you know, um, you know, you're right, I have good in me, and I have at least a little bit of redemption. You know, take carry it back to the stuff that he did in the prequel. It's like, you know... He did something not necessarily that made up for it, but you know he at least made sure that the last thing he did was to take out the emperor and you know at least be able to save his son if he couldn't like you know if he wasn't strong enough to you know resist. Thankfully, his son was, and instead of letting his son die because he didn't choose to make the mistakes that he did he wanted to have his son live and he did that that was a cool thing I mean like I said this one was probably the like the best um, best movie in the series 
when it came to relationship dynamics because it did a lot to really like send home the whole uh, Skywalker family um, saga kind of um, in the right way um, now here's where I'm gonna start ranting again because we get to the end of the film and here's where George Lucas um, again uh, solidifies my opinion that one he's not the genius that we say he is he came up with a great idea he built a great foundation for people to build on but ultimately um, that was the best that we got out of him thankfully Kasdan helped him with the screenplays for the last two because um, he he got lucky with the first one I still maintain and then he got help making sure that these last two finished strong in the original uh, trilogy I wish he would have had more help on the prequels would have been a lot better because see when he did those change ups around the time when he started talking that I need to have better technology before I make another Star Wars movie and I wish I had better technology because I want to quote unquote fix these things his fixes didn't fix shit one during that final scene where Luke's getting hit by the lightning and Vader decides to save him the originally you see him look at Luke look at the Emperor look at Luke and then just turn grab the Emperor throws him um, I guess he felt like you needed extra voiceover so he paid James Earl Jones a little bit more money I guess just to say the word no you know he had him go no no I'm like no <laughs> no no why did you do that George why unnecessary shit unfucking necessary shit um it 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 just was out of place um I understand what he was going for but no it it was out of place um then you get to uh, everything all the way at the end and the celebration where he decides to add celebrate now I guess I'm okay with him showing scenes from other planets celebrating um, the Emperor's demise. Um, although I'm curious as to how fucking fast or how late after the battle um, this celebration um, happened or how fast the information got out because you guys like really, really got it all the way to Coruscant. Um, I guess, um, you know. Indoor was close to um, the main place and then they can shoot it all over the place. I don't know. Maybe communications across the galaxy is that strong from um, Rebel Starships? I don't know. Anyway, he changed up everything. He had those scenes in from different planets um, celebrating and people setting off fireworks and uh, whatever. Um, and then he changed the music which I thought was really really bad because I thought one of the things that gave the end character was that original song where he had the Ewoks playing the music and singing it fit and I mean John Williams made that song flow like perfectly and seamlessly into the Star Wars um, theme and it just fit the moment uh, that they were had you know what I mean the Ewoks celebrating Luke, Han, Leia, Lando, Chewie, R2, CPO, the main people, um, even Wedge up in there. Uh, they're all just having this like great moment together and partying with the Ewoks. It fit. It was like their it was their music, their culture blending in with, you know, the happiness of the It was perfect. Why'd you need to change that? Like seriously. What was wrong with it? It was fine. And that's where that's that's my thing um that's where I you know looking at these put it like it looking at them in order you know I know I've heard of the machete cut I forgot exactly how that goes people say if you look at that it'll make the first three better I honestly don't think um it could for someone like me um just because from a perspective of storytelling I still don't think it would sure up the continuity um, because it's not just a question of continuity but execution 
and I felt like the first the prequels were executed poorly on top of messed up the lore a bit by having things in there that didn't make sense didn't mesh well um, and then of course sadly having to look at these um, re-edited uh, versions of the original trilogy this made me realize just how he maybe it's good that he didn't have his original vision I guess these re-edits re and the prequels are his original vision of what Star Wars should have been and I feel like we were blessed that he didn't get that because if he did who knows how we would have felt about this seriously um, I have to make put that question out there um, who knows how much we would have loved the Star Wars franchise had he been able to have technology do the things that he said he wanted to do which he executed in the re-edits and the prequels so uh, we might have dodged the bullet but yeah definitely um, really quick I guess if I have to rank in order uh, from top to bottom uh, Empire for me this is for me Empire Jedi New Hope um, Attack of the Clones and you know what I I'm going to actually go Phantom Menace as fifth and Revenge as sixth simply because uh, well Phantom was a mess and had some really bad stuff um I can't forgive the way that Revenge was supposed to be the closer and it just was like all over the fucking place um and just like not necessarily it didn't have to necessarily tie things together because it was supposed to flow into the next um trilogy but it built so many more strands that kind of started to break the original trilogy so it it's it's the worst because it was probably the most damaging to the franchise so yeah it has to be the worst for me I, I really do feel like that's the worst so yeah again Empire Jedi New Hope clones Phantom Menace Revenge of the Sith that's my order right there for this franchise so here we go I'm all set I'm refreshed now that I've seen these in the same week that episode 7 are coming out I should be able to flow right into that and be able to you know I'm gonna try not to be too critical because I do realize that it's been some time um, they have a 30 year gap um, which I think was a very smart move was to give yourself like a lot of breathing room um, so you know do what he I guess he tried to do in the original uh, uh, with the original series and the prequels except for it's just not right to do prequels after if you're not going to uh, be consistent in, in everything um, and make sure it matches up I think Abrams is gonna make sure things matches up with how Jedi end um, hopefully we get a good explanation as to why things are still the way they are 30 years later you know because we saw the Empire the Emperor fall we saw the second Death Star so the assumption would be with that the Empire would fall although having read books I know that's not true there were still um, Imperial remnants people who finally like after constantly infighting between each other got their shit together and banded together to continue to try to keep Imperial um, rule in place so um, I would love to see how they're going to explain that especially since all the other the books and stuff have been decanonized and now it's Abram and the other directors and screenwriters opportunity to continually shape and re um, and, you know shape and reimagine what happened after Jedi um, so it's gonna be interesting it'll be very very interesting hopefully they execute it well um, We'll see. We'll see. But anyway, as always, uh, you guys hit me up. Let me know what you think, and I'll holler at you later. This is your boy, Black Magazine. I'm out. Deuces.